Hello, I'm David, this is Gemma, and this is Creative Differences in the house. Um, with regards to writing, what is your method as a writer? Is it always the same regardless of if, if you... Uh, hello! <laughs> One of your dogs. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, is, is it always the same if, if you're doing a short film or a feature film or a, a corporate script or whatever? Is your process always the same? I think it is. I'm trying to regiment it at the moment so that it's more productive. Um, but what I seem to always begin with is I have like an opening, I, an opening scene that just comes to life in its entirety. Right. Um, and then I decide whether or not that opening scene is interesting enough to make me want to watch more. So I, it's almost like watching a movie in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, so then I'll, I will get that down on paper and I will write for as long as I can in one stretch to see where it goes. And then when that stretch is over, I go away and I analyze what I've done and I outline a potential story okay. for that character slash characters as like, like a treatment in a way. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I'm doing it now with a series I've started called Paper Thin. Right. It's a, a, a dramedy series. Um, and I've kind of, I've done six episodes of Outline, uh -huh. but I've also done, uh, I've also got two ideas for two other episodes where I could stretch it out to eight. Um, and I didn't used to do that. When I first started writing, I would just, I would just pick it up from where I dropped it mm -hmm. and try to carry on. Mm -hmm. But that's actually not a very productive way of doing it at all. Um, if you outline it, you map out your story and it's, it, it stops me getting writer's block right. and it also means I'm going to get to my end because okay. if you try, if, if I in the past when I've tried to freestyle it the whole way I get to a point where I'm, and it's usually at the end where I go oh I wish I knew how to finish this the way I'd known how to start it uh -huh. like the, it was like this intuitive complete idea at the end like there was at the beginning and yet it, it never is but if I outline it I get somewhere close to that right so you do like a like a map if the the film is the journey, you do you do your map. Do do you do like points that you have to hit? I by by this point I need yeah, to have I, done this. Um, I th it's not really points I have to hit because I um I mean there are so many kind of screenwriting methods or mythologies like the circle um, by Dan Harmon things like that. And I've tried to engage in some of those to see if it improves my writing or improves my prolificity, but I'm, I'm quite a prolific writer as it is. I don't, I don't suffer from writer's block very mm -hmm. often. Um, so I don't know. I don't think I'm that strict with myself. I think I'm still trying to find my own system that works for me right. by adopting elements of other people's uh -huh. and seeing what works for me and what doesn't but what i do find really hard is the rewrite like yeah. i'm doing a rewrite on something that i think you've read in the past a long long time ago um and trauma. it's like wait, yeah it's that and it, it is a trauma it's a trauma <laughs> just trying to re redraft this thing it's like wading through treacle it's a nightmare and what i've done with it is i've i've one of my little notebooks and things rest <laughs> right now i've um i'm i'm writing down what each scene is right uh, like a short sentence because it's <laughs> i exported it and it turns out that it's like 140 pages and i wouldn't even let someone read 140 pages <laughs> let alone film 140 pages um it needs to lose 30 to 35 pages right. so what i'm doing right now is i'm going through it with a fine tooth comb writing down every little scene and what every little scene's what it's achieving in the story and how it is or is not moving the story forward and i am trying to go through it and be brutal and cut tons of stuff out 
And then once I've cut that out, I need to put it back together again, see if it's coherent, which I'm expecting it not to be, and then have to make it coherent in the following redraft. Right. Okay. Um, but I've also had stronger ideas, some stuff I want to take out, some things I want to put in. Um, so I don't know how long it's going to take. Like I promised to send it to someone a couple of weeks ago for them to read. And I had to get back to them a few days ago and go, I, I thought it would be ready by now, but <laughs> it's taking forever and I'm too embarrassed to send it to you in this current state. So I'll send it to you when I can send it to you. And they've been really <laughs> great. They laughed and they were like, it's fine. You know, can give you notes on it whenever I was like, I'm just not prepared to hand this to you. I was like, it'll be like torture not giving you that to do like <laughs> I need to just engage some objectivity of my own and be brutal with myself and then send it to someone for oh. for evaluation but I, I don't like the idea of completely throwing away any of my ideas mm. I've got stuff that I've put aside because I've got stuck with it and not knowing what I really wanted to say um, but I think I will always go back to stuff and at least steal a few ideas from it yeah. if I can't complete that I did if I can't complete that particular narrative um but i haven't written anywhere near as much as i would like to have written and uh, that's why this year i've been focusing on that a lot more i've i've written two and a half episodes of my series and i've written um the outline the bible for the for the series um and i think it's one of my strongest ideas and i it's weird it's such a subjective industry because i've sent the script out to a handful of people who absolutely love it and then i sent it to someone uh, who was on my script reading course yeah. for because we we all agreed that we do some swaps with each other for free for a, for a, a bit of experience and she sent me a really damning report <laughs> it was Ouch. all ones and two and i was <laughs> like wow um and i i'm not someone who gets defensive i don't see the point of writing back through and, and arguing my case yeah you know if that's her opinion, that's her opinion. And I don't agree with everything she put, but then there are things in there that I hadn't considered. Um, and I've, I've gone back and I've made changes and I think it's a much better script for it. Cool. But I do think she was a bit harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it deserved all ones and twos. When Throw in the three, were... at least. <laughs> <laughs> it's at least um, mediocre, come on. <laughs> but this is one of the things where I really worry about my ability to be able to get on the page exactly what's up here. Mm -hmm. It's it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Um, because when I reread my scripts, they obviously read to me as they've come to me. Yeah. And I understand every nuance and, and I know these characters even before I've started putting them down on paper properly. Mm. I know who yeah. these people are. Yeah. Um and sometimes I won I wonder that again, are my ideas too big for my abilities still? Am I still closing that gap? And yeah. I think if I'm honest with myself, writers are probably always closing that gap. Mm -hmm. Because your ideas get bigger as well. Yeah. So that gap jumps again and then you've got a cap and that you know it keeps happening. Yeah. Um but I want I want I want constructive feedback i want criticism yeah because that's what i do i can use that absolutely i've always been better at being objective about other people's writing than my own i'm sure that that is something like something everybody experiences yeah. um but you know back when i was still at university people who were writing scripts they were sending them to me for feedback <clears throat> i was always one of the first choices okay to, to get feedback because as much as I would be kind in my feedback, I wouldn't always just be glowing. Oh, it's great. I love it because I wanted a part in it. Yeah, a yeah. lot of actors do. They <laughs> like things more than they really do because they want to be in it. Yeah. But I've never seen the point in that. I've always just seen, you know, like be honest. Because even if you do get to be in it, if you've been honest about the feedback and they improve it, then what you're going to be in will be better. So as, as someone who's always had that ideology, I've, I've, give, I've, fe I've fed back on hundreds of scripts before I started doing this. Uh-huh. This is, so this it's is, very natural to do this. Yeah. This is your, your new... Um, I, see, I, I call it script doctoring. I don't know if that's right. Because I, I, I don't really consider you to... Um, I don't think of it as being script editing because you're reading over it and you're giving... You're, you're not editing the script. Is, is it, that's, uh, am I wrong? <laughs> no, you're, you're right and wrong at the same time. Um, the reporting is just, you know 
objective feedback. Editing is when you engage with that writer and, you know, that, that's a process. That takes weeks. Right. Uh, I, I edited um, a script this year uh, for someone who was sending it into the Impact Imagine competition. Mm -hmm. Yep. It or the, I think it was for the horror genre. Okay. Um, and like, I worked extensively on that. I rewrote huge parts of that. Yeah, that's um, what I think of as script editing. Yeah. So it's 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 just different services that I offer. So you know, the reporting starts at like fifty five quid for a feature, less for a short film and stuff like that. It's kind of worked out on pages, uh, number of pages. Um, but you know editing is a much more involved process where you you the the writer has to trust you so much more um and you're more freely able to give storyline suggestions because mm. you're more involved in the story itself reporting is more about just sort of standing from the sidelines and saying right this is what i get from this yeah. is this what you were looking for yeah um if this is what you're going for but you haven't quite hit the marks then this is how you could potentially do it, mm -hmm. maybe. But it's your choice. It's ultimately yeah. yours. Can you edit a script for someone you don't really know? Because you don't really know what they're trying to achieve. You know, you can't really see their vision. Other, I mean, you can see what they're doing on the page, but you can't really see what that's, they're trying to get at. That's two different questions in a way. Okay. Because knowing someone doesn't necessarily mean that you you understand that art. And not knowing someone doesn't mean that you can't understand their art. Okay. So um, I think it depends on what you're comfortable doing, you know, what your confidence level is at, with, with certain things. If you came to me with a, with a drama, I would have no qualms in getting involved because that's my forte. I really enjoy that. At the same, in the same way, I kind of, I, I had no problem with the horror because it was quite a character driven piece. Um, and thrillers also tend to be quite psychological and character driven as well. So I, I can expand. Um, I'm doing dramedy because comedy on its own is not my forte. And I have to be honest with myself. I like things that make me laugh and I uh -huh. like, I want to make other people laugh. But um, I, I like a little bit of slapstick and, and, and things like that, which you can throw into a drama yeah. to, to, to bring up tension and stuff like that. Whereas something like absurdist comedies i enjoy watching them but mm -hmm. i'm not i i wouldn't be any good at writing them you know like mighty boosh like that like kind of went over my head okay and i know that they're massively popular and people loved that stuff but that's just not it's not what i engage with typically mm -hmm. so if somebody came to me and they you know they were willing to offer me big bucks to to edit this script but it was something i couldn't possibly do i would never take the job right it would be completely dishonest. So I only take on, I, you know, I could give a report. Yeah. I could be objective to do that, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't get my hands dirty with the process and, and, and advise in that direction. If I offer that service, it's because I think I can help. It's cool. So do you have a, a website for your thing? And I'll, I'll uh, put the links at the I'm end. I'm still trying. I she's she's working on it. <laughs> I built this website in, between Christmas and New Year, and I'm just such a technophobe. I I can't. I'm rubbish at it, and my partner works so hard, uh -huh. like six days a week, that I I'm, I find it very difficult to find a time where it's appropriate for me to ask him to help me out. But his Easter break is coming up, and he has promised to help me with it. Good so lad. Hopefully, get on hopefully it, Chris. I'll... Come on, Chris. Pull your finger out, mate. <laughs> I want to get on Fiverr as well because I think that could be potentially useful. Uh -huh. um, but at the moment, no, I'm 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 connecting with people through Twitter and Instagram, and I've you know, I've done a lot of reports since I became certified. You did one for me. I was very yeah. pleased. Thank you very much. I think I've done something like fifty in three months. Blimey! So, what's your uh, t Twitter and Instagram's uh, handle? Some of them, I couldn't put the whole thing on. Basically, I'm screenwriter femme. There you go. So, screenwriter F E W M E, but with some of them i couldn't get the handle long enough so i i think i'm at screenwriter f on twitter um <laughs> i'm i think i'm screenwriter fem on either facebook or instagram but ultimately screenwriter fem 
at Good. gmail.com email address and that's probably that's foolproof you'll be able to get hold of me that way but screen yeah I'm on Insta- a, sorry screen at gmail gmail gmail.com but you you've seen the silhouette logo that i use yeah so, I'm, I'm thinking about it. anyone who's watching this who wants to send the thing through they can i'll put the the links at the end and then they can oh, contact okay. you and on on t- what's the best way to contact you in the first instance on twitter or well, I check my, and my, um, and my Instagram daily. Um, so most people just direct message me through there. Um, but obviously, if you're not on either of those platforms, um, then just email. I check that fairly regularly as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, I have, you know, I have a highly competitive rate card. I'm, I'm early days. I'm not, I'm not the cheapest person on the market because I don't think that I should be. And uh-huh. I'm certainly not the expensive by a long, long way. Right. Um, I who are spending more than double what I charge on reports. Wow. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I know what it's like to be a struggling writer and stuff, and I, I, I don't feel comfortable charging more than I do right now. Mm-hmm. It might go up with inflation as the years go by, but it won't. <laughs> won't I don't think that's fair on people. Because, um, you know, we also we have to set aside budgets for festival submissions and competitions, and, right, yeah. you know, you pay everything all of the time yeah. so I, I don't want to put people off by by charging too much for, for these services sure. and, and these <laughs> ones that charge twice as much <laughs> these ones that charge twice as much if someone wants to get two or three you know um reports done they could they could get twice as many done with you so <laughs> arguably yeah i mean that arguably yeah See, this is the thing. There are different kinds of reports as well. I mean, I do the overview report, um, which is like a one page. Sometimes it's two pages, depending on how much I try to fit in. Um, but then other people do offer more in-depth reports as well. Um, so I, I know I know someone who I follow on Instagram. She's absolutely brilliant. She's called The Professional Pen. I love okay. her. She recently did like a 16-page report for someone. Um, and so her charging more for that service makes total sense. Right. Cool. No, that's, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, wh- when you, wh- what inspires your stories? When you're writing, where do you draw inspiration from? Probably a mix of whatever's happening to me at the time, crossed with a moment of inspiration that can come from anything. It can come from watching something. It can come from reading something or music. Music can really sort of get the creative juices flowing. Do you carry your um, notebook around with you wherever you go? And, uh, scribble, scribble, scribble. Notes. They're all over the house. They're everywhere. <laughs> uh, they are. I mean, I'm a, a notebook hoarder. <laughs> you... I ne- and I hate, I'm afraid of getting to the end of a notebook because right. I love my notebook so much. So, like, they're all half full. <laughs> my, I've, got, I've got notebooks I've never even used because they're so, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, as soon as I start using it, I know that I'm going to make a mess of it, so I'll buy another one. Yeah. <laughs> I've got this yeah. one. I've got this thing, this leather journal, right? Never been used. <laughs> it's just, just, <laughs> it's just sitting here. This is too pretty. <laughs> it is. It's a lovely book. So yeah, I've got loads of yeah. Um, when when you uh, do, do you write every day? Do you make a point, even if it's rubbish, even if you don't feel I like it? Do. I tell people to. Okay. And I should do what I say, um, but uh, you're slowly disappearing a, off the screen. I, I I'm in a funny place in my life where you know I've, I've, my diagnosis have just recently sort of happened, and I'm I'm being told by my doctors and my my loved ones that I should be taking advantage of lockdown in the sense of I should just give myself a break, like um, I've. Got, I talk about being tired a lot and stuff, but it, it's more like a bone tired. It's like a deep exhaustion. Yeah. Um, and I've noticed that if I, if I set an alarm for myself um, that wakes me up even an hour earlier than, than what would be my natural wake up, mm-hmm. I start to display symptoms of having like a cold or flu and stuff right. like that. So um, I'm <laughs> not to go too much into my health and stuff, but I've had a, a lot of blood tests recently and things like that. And um, there's a problem and I don't know what that problem is yet. And I've had to be referred to a specialist. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if I get told, like, you need to just not work for several months because 
you know yeah. you're you're not well like I've, I've been coming out in like um s like swellings and hives and, yeah. and i've never had anything like that before in my life but the day before yesterday i woke up one eye was shut my lip was swollen and i was really worried about doing this with you because oh, i was like if you. i wake up and i'm and my face looks like i've yeah. been stung by bees, right. then i you know i'm not want to do it yeah, um absolutely that but that's been happening a lot over the last few it months is stress and, related then or I, I think it is, um, but I've been referred to the allergy clinic. There's a problem with my white blood cell count, which I don't fully understand okay. what that means hmm. at the moment. Um, but yeah, so normally I would be giving myself a hard time and demanding that I write every single day because yeah. I did get into that routine for right. a long time. Um, but now I'm actually trying to do the opposite of that and going, you, you don't have anything to write today, so don't force yourself to do it yeah. because you're tired and... Yeah. Um, you know, if I don't properly rest, then what if I never get completely well again? Mm. So I'm trying to be kind to myself in a yeah. way that I'm not used to. This is not, <laughs> no. this isn't a comfortable <laughs> the thing place. Is, though, to... I feel guilty when I don't work. Well, this is, the, th the thing that some people don't understand is that creating can be a way to relax. It's like, you know, even if, if your job is writing, it depends what you're writing because mm. if you've got an idea for a, a, a short film that right getting that on paper it, it takes your mind off everything else and it makes you feel good because you're achieving something it's a bit of escapism for you and it can actually you know help the endorphins to to flow and so sometimes uh, that is the break you know just writing something that isn't related to work yeah, 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 true. I think that's when I first started writing Paper Thin is I was just having fun with it. Um, but as with anything that you take seriously and fall in love with, you know, in order to get to the end, in order to complete this thing, I'm going to have to set myself deadlines. I'm going to mm. have to follow through on what I try to set myself to do. Do you do it in um, stages, like finish, you know, I'm going to use terms that I don't fully understand in film finish act one by a certain time finish act two by a certain time and act three. i don't write that cool. um i it just it's never really occurred to me to write an act and i know that it can help with structure and, and stuff like that um and i'm not against the idea it's just never really occurred to me to do it that way mm. can you watch your um, film it's just probably a stupid question but can you watch your film and say that's the end of act one What do you mean, my film? No, no, I, I, a film. If you put a film on, on you know, you, you put, you're watching a film, you're at the pictures, you're watching Avengers or something. Can, can you sit there and say, right, that's the end of Act 1, we're in Act 2 now? Because that's yes, what I'm... I can't... I can't do that. I, 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 I get absorbed so... into the... Fi Sorry, go on. <laughs> no, no, I, I... I can. Sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. It really depends. Like, things like the Mumblecore films and dramas and stuff like that, they can be harder to, to find those definitive moments right. um but in things like horrors they're quite clear and things like thrillers they're usually fairly clear okay um and then you know then tv stuff is even clearer in a way especially something that's kind of written that way like did you ever see the affair no if it's not well, a comedy just, probably not what, <laughs> no it's, it, but it's it's an interesting way to tell a story because uh they tell this one story from multiple characters' perspectives. Okay. So part one, part one is Alison, part two is Noah, part three is Cole, so okay. on and so forth. So you can see that there's kind of acts in how they break that up depending on which character's perspective it's coming from. But one of my favourite elements of the affair is that not everybody is a reliable narrator. Right. Okay. And I love that yeah. because the, I'm not going to ruin it for you because there's one character who is very much an unreliable narrator and i didn't even realize that that's what they were doing until i got to the final season and then i looked back on everything that he'd shown us from his perspective uh -huh. um and the things that he'd said and the things that he'd seen and the outfits change and things like that and i realized this character lies to himself okay. as much as everyone else therefore he is an unreliable narrator right. um and i just think that that's 
I think it's brilliant. I think it's very clever. And um, I think it's a really, really good show. I think it's a bit of a love-hate thing about the ending. Some people loved it, some people hated it. I, I kind of I wasn't really on board with it the first time because I don't know whether my expectations were just too unfairly high or whatever. But I've just rewatched the whole series now and I got to the episode, the last episode, two days ago. And having binge-watched it and seen right. it all in one go, it's actually brilliant. Cool. The affair. Highly recommend. Is that on the Netflix? Yeah. Uh, or the Amazon? I can't remember. Sorry. Okay, that's whatever. <laughs> you should watch this thing. I don't know where it's on. Um, when you when other people direct your scripts, do you find it difficult to let go? No. No. Cool. No. <laughs> Usually, Excellent. because I've hired a director that can see the same thing as me. Like right. the writer and the director aren't aren't in agreement with each other. That's not a good thing. Right. You should be on the same page because, you know, it's almost like the cap. If you're the DOP, then the camera is an extension of your arm. Mm. I feel like the director is an extension of the writer. Okay, I, I think of it as like the the writer is the writer, the director is the narrator, the DOP is like the illustrator. You know, mm. the actors are the the, the pictures, the imagery. But if, if those three departments don't share a vision, yeah, you're the best. No, absolutely. Yeah, good, good answer, Gemma. Good answer. <laughs> um, what what does the uh, foreseeable future hold for you? Are you have you got anything sort of planned? Right now, I'm just I'm just wanting to to take a bit of more of a break. I was hoping not to at this point. I was hoping that at this point, after nearly a year of lockdown, that I'd be okay, but. It's been a very stressful year, it's, you know, with Chris's his treatment and, and everything like that. Um, because we've been so isolated, mm. we're nowhere near family. I was, you know, th there have been months at a time when I've had to do sort of almost everything for him. Right. Um, it's quite exhausting. But right now, I'm just feeling very grateful that he's well. Yeah. Um, and that he's back to work and he's feeling, feeling himself again. Um, and uh, I'm in a position where... I've finally been diagnosed properly and I'm, I'm getting the support that I need for the first time. So all I really want to do is just get well right now. Cool. And then once well, I feel like, I feel like a rocket will, will mm. explode underneath me. And if I've got suddenly a burst of energy and the ability to do the things that I've been dying to do for years, I think that I will probably go too far the other way and end up burning myself out. But at least I'll, at least I'll have that kind of, momentum back absolutely you might find that once lockdown's lifted you, you might feel better anyway you know do you think might you yeah maybe able to get out and i've been see trying people? to get married for like for like the last year and a half right like we was get married uh i think it was may 2019 20 2020 we were supposed to do it and then okay. we had to post it and then rebook it and then we posted it we're like we've had to do that five times Wow. And uh, the last time they came to us and uh, we got a letter about two weeks ago, we were supposed to be doing it this May. And uh, we hadn't bothered inviting people or doing anything because we, we were sure it wasn't going to happen yeah. anyway. And obviously it's not. We've had another letter cancelling it. So right now we're just, we've just thrown our hands up and gone, we're not doing this right now. Yeah. No idea when we will. But it would be nice to do that. Yeah. That would be, <laughs> be cool. That would be nice for you. It's something to look forward to, isn't it? You know, yeah. And by then you'll you'll be able to have you know a big old party. Everyone's going to be so desperate for a party. You're just going to, it's yeah. just going to be nuts. All of our, everyone we spoke to about coming to that, which of course you're invited to. By oh, the thank way. you. And when the day comes, everyone everyone's been saying that they'll be they'll be dying for for some socialising and stuff yeah. like that. And also we've had tons of people come back to us going after the year you guys have had. Like there won't be a dry eye in the place. Everyone will be weeping and happy <laughs> come through this and. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I just, I just think that we, we just need a happy day. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm sure it's going to happen. I'm sure it is. Could you? Um, yeah, well, I, you're, you're, you're. I don't know if you can see your screen, but you're in the bottom left corner. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's the video because I didn't want to start watching. Oh, sorry, myself. sorry. There we go. Um, yeah, uh, no, you, you were slow, and every now and again, you would just disappear a little bit. Um, 
Sorry. That's all right. No, no, that's, that's fine. So uh, longer term, um, have you got sort of ideas sort of cooking for feature film and things like that? Anything you're... Yeah, actually, I do. Um, can you see that? I can. The Lancashire Caruso. I have the rights to this book. Oh, wow. Uh, and I am in the process of uh, reading it right now, but we'll be adapting it into a screenplay. Um, and I'm really excited about this because uh, this man sang with my great grandfather at the Royal Albert Hall. Nice. So I have a familial connection to this. Yeah. He was also born in the same town as me. Um, and uh, and, and he, he had a fascinating life. He was... Uh, he used to sing down in the mines for the miners to keep their spirits up when he was young. Oh, wow. um, and then he ended up getting his training in Italy, which is very rare for a British uh -huh. uh, opera singer. Um, and he had this, he went from, ra uh, from rags to riches and back to rags again in, in the final years of his life oh. where he became um, a rampant alcoholic and, you know, kind of lost everything that he built up. But it makes for an amazing story. Yeah, I'll bet. Oh wow! What have you? So you're you're just reading it now? Um, just reading it now. Yeah, it's not an easy read. I have to say, it's quite it's quite a tough read because it's very um, it's quite factual. Right. Uh, so I have I'm gonna have to find a way to kind of I'm gonna have to find other source material for kind of anecdotal yeah stuff. That, you know, I'm gonna have to build up characters and and things like that from my imagination in order to fill in some of those gaps. Um, but did uh, he ever perform but, in music halls? Yeah, I'm a member of the British Music Hall Society. So if you want, I can ask them if they've got any uh, any reference material that cool. Absolutely, yeah. His name was Tom Burke, Thomas Burke. Thomas Burke, B U R K E. Yeah. Yep. Hey, cool. And it was the Lancashire Caruso. That was that was. I think that's more of a kind of colloquialism. Okay, they might know him, is it though, Caruso? I'd be surprised if they didn't. I mean, uh, I can only yeah. ask, and we'll see what happens. Awesome, um, thank you. No, you're totally welcome. Totally welcome. Um, right, so with everything that you've done, um, and you know all these different uh, strings to your boat. What do you know now that you wish you knew when you're starting off? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the, the whole thing with the university lecturers. <laughs> Lots of things. So many things. Like we've discussed before, I, I would, I would have liked to have done all, uh, you know, a lot of short films whilst I was at uni to, to have a showreel portfolio ready to go out to agents. The moment I graduated, um, I would obviously have been. I would have liked to have done the feature film that failed. I would have liked to, I would film that over four weeks instead of two so that I would have been able to have um, the ability to, to make sure that we got the coverage. Cause that's yeah. all it came down to. So frustrating, it was just coverage. It was nothing else. Um, Is it something so you I, could revisit? The pro, like no. From scratch, no. no? Like, that story doesn't resonate with me anymore. Right. It's, it's from too long ago now. Um, I've outgrown it, okay. shall we say. And uh, so what I would do is I, I, I wouldn't, I would tell myself to not be such an arrogant little know-it-all <sighs> and make a feature film before even trying to make a short film. Right. So stupid. But it, it wasn't because I thought I was the dog or anything like that. It was because I thought I didn't want to um, invest in this equipment and pay all these people if I didn't at least have a chance of making some money back. Mm. And I thought, you don't make money from short films. Right. They're a calling card for further work. Yeah. Um, and what I should have done was postpone making that feature film by a year or two, worked on the script even more and made it better than it was because it wasn't really as good as it could have been. Right. Um, and in that interim time, uh, because I was doing, I was working, <clears throat> that was straight after uni, really, very shortly after uni. So I was, that was the time when I was doing all the student films that I should have done while I was in study. So I was working with a lot of students at the time. And what I should have done was gone, right, I will do your film, your film, your film, your film, and then you will all do my film. Yeah. It's common sense. It just Absolutely. didn't it occur to me at the time, which mm -hmm. is so stupid. <laughs> but uh, that's what I would do 
differently. Um, I would also, I would also have gone to some auditions that I turned down because I think I turned them down out of fear and lack of confidence. And I also would have said no to some of the projects I said yes to um, because they were uh, they were a waste of time because the person who was in charge either lost the will to carry on or lost the confidence to complete the project. I think I know what you're talking about there. <laughs> I don't think you do, actually. Okay, a different one. But, yeah, I... Oh, I oh. <laughs> oh, yes, that one too. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I had a number of experiences. Yeah. Um, I think everyone just, starts I, out with the right intentions. It's just when they realize how much work's involved. And, you know, in, in that instance, you know, keep changing the script and not liking other people coming up with ideas for their own characters. Yeah, but this is this is the thing. Some people I've worked with, including the one we're talking about, but not the only one, um, they have an overinflated sense of self. Right. I feel a bit sorry for that kind of um, complete lack of self-awareness. Yeah. Because this is the thing. When you try to force yourself to be something you're not, it kind of makes you a bit of a joke. Hmm. But that doesn't mean that you can't be yourself. No, in don't, this don't be someone do some... else. Be you. Yeah, be you. Don't try to be this thing that you think that you need to be in order to be a leading man, you know, yeah. or a leading woman or whatever. Um, the more honest your performances are and the more you engage with them yourself, I think the better they will be. Uh, you know, if 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 all you're really looking to to do is have your ego inflated, then you're you're <sighs> you're the only people who can get away with that are the people who are brought into this industry through nepotism, mm. whose parents have been so well regarded or so famous or whatever. Those are the only people that can really get away with that, shit, unless you're someone like Weinstein and you know these these big powerhouse people. But the, it's so funny how some normal sort of regular Joes see themselves reflected in that because I wouldn't want to be reflected in that. No, it, it's good to have confidence, but it's not good to have uh, an overinflated sense of self. Uh, yeah. Excellent. So um, what we'll do, um, I'll post any links uh, to websites or projects or your Twitter thing and Instagram thing down below. Um, if you're enjoying this show uh, and this channel, uh, do like, subscribe and ring my bell to get notices, notifications and things. Um, is there anything else you wanted to, to discuss? Not really. You good? I'm good.